Morning. Kristen, I'm still wondering if there are so many people, whether they saw champagne on the menu this morning. That, that's, that's what I'm still trying to figure out, if because you saw champagne. Uh, I, I probably will be the only champagne you have today, so I hope you're going to enjoy it. Uh, listen, it's a great pleasure to be back. I, I was saying that I wish that the, and I want to thank the officer with the, bap, uh, the backpipe. I, I just wish that he would have shorter legs uh, than that because I wanted to go around, but they say, Minister, if you go around the table, we'll be there all day. Uh, uh, so uh, I could say hello to people, but they give me a, a challenge. They say, uh, last year, I think I visited 600 booths in an hour. So I think uh, today we have a challenge to, to beat that. So I hope that you're ready because after the uh, address, I think we're gonna get back to work and, and certainly looking forward to, to meet uh, each and every one of you today. Uh, bonjour tout le monde, évidemment, grand plaisir d'être avec vous ce matin pour, uh, évidemment, un événement important uh, dans le calendrier Ottawa. I just want to welcome all the, the uh, serving members of different nations. I was with uh, uh, our general who was uh, reminding me uh, that we have service members from uh, many, many different countries, our, our NATO partners and friends. So, uh, uh, I don't need to tell you that it's great to be back at Kensec. I think you can see it. I woke up even at 6, uh, and, and I think Kristen was saying, we thought you would come here uh, even before the breakfast, and, and I was so eager uh, that, that we waited in the parking lot to say hello to people, uh, to make sure that, that you would have the warm uh, welcome from Canada uh, for an event like that. And this is probably the, the one event on my agenda that I get most excited about. So don't say that to all the others I'm going to meet today, uh, because I may get in trouble. Uh, but certainly, it is the highlight uh, of my day. And I hope it's the highlight of your day as well, because uh, uh, there's a lot going on. And I think your president of CATC was saying something profound. Uh, if there's one thing that we should all remember, and one thing which, uh, start, you know, that she really sparked my, my attention this morning. She said, defense is having a moment. And I think it is true. I mean, if you just look at the number of people you have gathered. And first of all, I, I want to give you a big round of applause to the president of Cat Secrets and for the work <clears throat> you've been doing. She <clears throat> reminded me that last time I was here, uh, people were wearing masks. So actually, uh, we've moved a long way from that, and now we can be... Uh, together. Uh, even before I start my speech, and I hope uh, you're ready uh, because they drafted a wonderful speech, but let me just go off the cuff before. I'm happy to email it to you after. Uh, uh, but uh, let me <clears throat> just look at the big picture. I, I think the uh, president, uh, the person who made the introduction was kind enough, but as a former foreign affairs minister, trade minister, infrastructure minister, uh, just coming back from a state visit in Korea, which was about two weeks, Washington last week. Uh, let me give you the, what I see as the big picture. Uh, I think we live in a world of unprecedented challenges, but I would say also unprecedented opportunities. Um, in terms of the challenges, I don't need to tell you, uh, whatever leader you meet in the world today, wherever you go on the planet, there's three things which is top of mind. The first one is, is food security energy security, and supply chain resiliency. And I think you can play a role in order to address that. And this is compounded, I don't need to tell you, with geopolitical tensions, uh, with war in Ukraine, and also nations ordering critical minerals. But on the positive side, I would say this is Canada's moment. Uh, if we have a defense moment, I would say this is Canada's moment, because what people are looking for today as a stable, predictable, and long-term strategic partner. And I'll put it to you, ladies and gentlemen, that this is Canada in the 21st century, the long-term strategic partner that you need in order to ensure defense, security, and stability in the world. Not only uh, it's exciting to see so much innovations uh, that, that I've seen uh, over the years in the defense industry, uh, but what we're seeing as well uh, I'm always impressed by the passion and dedication uh, of the people and the enterprises. And many of you know that I'm part of your sales team. Uh, everywhere I go around the world, I've tried to be uh, the agent uh, to make sure that we would promote uh, the businesses, the products, and the services uh, that you're doing. And I think 
this is something that I would say, <clears throat> as a member of cabinet, I've always tried to instill, not only for me, but my colleagues, is that we become champion of your industries around the world. And uh, before I get even further, uh, let me say to Christine, uh, thank you for being such a leader. Uh, I even gave you the round of applause before it was even in my speech, so you see how much I think about you. Uh, uh, to say that you've been a great leader of this organization. And what I like is that, um, you know, today this is all about ambition. This is about possibilities. This is about leadership. And I think you embody uh, these values very well. So I'm very grateful that the organization is led by someone like you. I want also to introduce uh, Lisa Campbell. Uh, Lisa, which is president of the Canadian Space Agency. You may have heard, we're going back to the moon, by the way. You may have, yeah. <clears throat> That's a big moment. That's a big moment. I can tell you, when I was on stage at NASA, Lisa was with me with Bill Nelson. We had a moment. Uh, people were saying it. It was probably uh, in, in our nation history, one of the first times that we were live on all the networks in the United States. And you had the big Canadian flag there to say that Canada, this time, is going to be making history uh, with our American partners. And it reminded me of the words of President Biden that said, Canada and the United States can do great things because we do them together. And obviously in space, and you, Lisa, have been an outstanding leader to make sure that everyone in the world thinks about Canada when they talk about uh, space exploration. Uh, Jan Stewart is with me, the president of the NRC. Uh, you may think that getting my business card is good. Uh, the one of the president of the NRC is better uh, uh, because actually uh, he's leading uh, the innovation, the research, and the development we're doing in Canada, so it's great. Uh, je veux aussi remercier deux collègues qui sont avec moi. Andy Fillmore is with me. <clears throat> Andy is my primary secretary uh, uh, for industry. But I want to say something that everyone here needs to know is that if we have Diana, which is the NATO's defense innovation accelerator for the North Atlantic, in large part, it is thanks to this guy which is standing here. So you should stand up, Andy, because if we have that and we put Canada at the center of the innovation in NATO, uh, I can tell you that when you have a, a guy like Andy, who said Halifax is the place that this needs to go because that's where we're going to change, and that's where we're going to bring innovation, and that's where we have all the experts I want to, to recognize. Uh, we also have John McKay with us. John is somewhere. He's a bit taller than me, so you should recognize him. John is the chair of the National Defense Committee in Canada. So watch this gentleman there because actually he's the one in Parliament who speak on behalf of the defense industry and make sure that uh, uh, we always, with Minister Anand, uh, are, as a caucus and as a government, making sure that we do what's right for uh, men and women uh, who serve in uniform. Eh bien sûr, je voulais remercier tous les gens des Forces armées canadiennes qui sont avec nous. Je voulais remercier pour leur service. Uh, many of our service members are here today, and I just want to say how grateful we are. You are uh, some of the best ambassadors that we have around the world. I've had the pleasure to visit many of our bases and theater of operation as a Minister of Foreign Affairs. And, and I can tell you, you always uh, make us extremely proud. So I want to give you to all of those who serve our nation. I want to recognize you and our NATO partners as well who serve. As you may have seen over the past few months, I, I visited uh, several defense companies, uh, in particular uh, the two uh, NSS shipyards we have in Canada. And I can tell you, and I really invite you to do the same, that I rarely met employees who are prouder than, of what they do uh, than the ones I met on the production line. And it's amazing to me because uh, all these employees, and I remember this young welder, uh, which was impressing me because I said, what's your job? He said, my job is to defend Canada, sir. And that's the sense of purpose that you want to see. That's the sense of mission. It's, that's the sense that we want to instill in all the defense industries that you're contributing to peace and security around the world. And I can tell you, uh, this was an inspiring moment for me. And I think it just shows how much we need to work together to make sure that we bring the talent uh, that we need in order to be able to manufacture uh, these products and uh, that equipment in Canada. Uh, many people have told me that we've been able to attract a number of companies in Canada recently. You may have heard of Stellantis recently. Uh, uh, but, but I can tell you that the main reason that we've been able to attract investments in Canada, it starts with talent. 
Canada is still a big magnet for talent around the world, and I think that is what we need to create the innovation of tomorrow here in our country. Uh, the second thing I would say that everywhere going around the world, that people focus when they think about Canada is the strength of the ecosystem. And I always say Canadian uh, defense ecosystem and space ecosystem is strong and growing. <clears throat> Obviously, the fact that we have critical minerals is not lost on anyone. The fact that we also have renewable energy. As the world is going in a transition towards greener products, the fact that we have renewable energy is obviously attracting the eyes of everyone around the world. And lastly, but not lost, and you need to uh, be ambassadors like me when you go abroad and remember, Canada is the only G7 country in the world which has a free trade agreement with all other G7 countries in the world. And that is giving us a base in order to access market, which I would say uh, is on parallel. And at a time when the state of defense, aerospace, and cybersecurity capabilities are more important than ever, <clears throat> I know that we can all count on our defense partners and defense workers to raise up to the challenge uh, that is in front of us. And I apologize for the voice a bit this morning. Uh, we're still curing a number of speeches that I've done over the last three weeks in different time zones. Uh, but, <clears throat> but if you bear with me, it's going to come back at some stage. Uh, but obviously, uh, with the war in Ukraine that you have seen recently, uh, we have uh, demonstrated uh, more than ever uh, that we need to have a strong and dynamic defense industry and that we need to collaborate with our partners around the world. Comme je disais, ce qui est de plus en plus important, évidemment, avec la guerre en Ukraine, et je le vois avec mes alliés, mes collègues autour euh, de la planète, c'est d'avoir une industrie qui est dynamique et forte, mais aussi une collaboration exceptionnelle avec nos alliés à travers le monde. That's why I met a, a number of our NATO allies uh, during uh, uh, the last, uh, I would say, few months, and we exchanged a couple of thoughts, you know. Uh, one of the things that I'll come back to, which is clear in my mind and probably clear in your mind, we need to do better on procurement. And, and I'll come to that because the beautiful speech they wrote uh, includes a section on that. But I'll tell you from my heart, I think we need to do better and we need to think about uh, what we can do with our NATO partners and allies in terms of procurement, how we can streamline that, how can we make sure that we have the capabilities, uh, and how can we make sure that, you know, we buy tomorrow's technology today and, and making sure that we can have, uh, you know, the right equipment, the right tools, the right systems uh, for forces around the world. And whether it's in Farnborough last year in Washington, D.C. Just, just last week or in South Korea uh, recently, or at Le Bourget, where we're going to be in about two weeks, uh, I'm always reminded of three things. So if there's three things I'd like you to remember today, apart from the fact that defense is having a moment, and I have to give you the, uh, you know, that's your quote, and I love it, Christine. But first and foremost is that Canadian industry, for me, is the absolute best. Best when it comes to products, best when it comes to services, and best when it comes to innovation. Second, I would say when foreign companies participate and our procurement processes, they better commit themselves to making significant strategic investments in Canada. And some of you may have seen that I went for the very first time, I think, in Canadian history, at least we were told, that when I went with Minister Annan, our Minister of Defense, and I, we went for the first time in Washington. And we met with about every defense, the largest industry, or let's say the largest company in the defense industry. We had one message. We're going to change the game. We want to make sure that Canada now is integrated into the big supply chain in North America. That not only that we procure for the Canadian armed forces, that will be a role in building the capabilities of tomorrow. And we're going to do that with our U.S. friends and obviously our other NATO allies. But I can tell you that was a message that was resonating because uh, we want uh, to make sure that we are going to be better integrated and that defense procurement remains a win-win. Uh, in terms of job creation, economic growth, and IP generation. And I was reminding to American friends, I was saying, if you're going to extend production, obviously Canada is the natural choice. Uh, you know, under the defense procurement uh, uh, law in the United States, Canada is embedded with the United States. Uh, we have interoperability. Uh, we work together in many ways, and we want to keep that and build on that uh, to build the industry of the future. And I'm very bullish about the industry. You may have seen me when I took this job, you know, even with vaccines. You may recall at the time, we were wanting when it came to that. 
And I was foreign minister at the time, and we said never again we would have these vulnerabilities in our supply chain. That's why today I'm happy to say that we invested in biomanufacturing. And, you know, if we had like, what, 30 million in terms of fill and finish, today would be close to a billion uh, vaccine if we needed to produce them in Canada. Same thing when it came to uh, the EV vehicle of the future, the batteries. And now uh, my next big thing is to make sure with the defense spending that is coming, to make sure that we build one of the strongest defense industry in the world right here in Canada. We can applaud on that because that's a big thing. It's a big thing because, uh, trust me, if we get at something, we're going to succeed together. And thirdly, more than ever, we need, I would say, strong, resilient uh, supply chains for commodities, just like uh, critical minerals, semiconductors, uh, which are going to be key to our defense and aerospace sector. Because if you look at today, Canada uh, is the only country in the world, except for China, uh, which has all the critical minerals to manufacture not only the battery, uh, but the semiconductors. So we are key, and my mission is to make sure that we insert ourselves in these key strategic supply chains, um, and that I would say today, it is fair to say that Canada is the gold standard uh, when it comes to uh, reliability. And it's for those reasons that many of you have already, are already key suppliers uh, on multiple platforms that are used by the Canadian Armed Forces. The one that obviously comes to mind is the F-35, uh, one of our signature partnership with our American friends. Et une autre entreprise, je pense, qui est ici avec nous aujourd'hui, c'est Logistique Unicorp de Saint-Jean-sur-Richelieu, qui, elle, fournit l'ensemble de l'équipement. Oui, je pense que Louis est là. Est-ce que Louis est là? Louis, why don't you stand up because I can see you. Louis, here it is. Louis, uh, Louis non seulement est un leader exceptionnel, mais je veux dire devant tout le monde, uh, non seulement, Louis, tu as aidé les forces canadiennes, mais je dois dire devant tout le monde aujourd'hui que tu as été l'un des premiers à lever la main pour aider et soutenir l'Ukraine. Alors, merci au nom de tout le monde d'avoir été là. Louis was one of the first to raise his hand and say, we're going to be there to support Ukraine. So, thank you for what you're doing, Louis. And, and uh, you didn't know you would be in my speech this morning, but uh, here you go. Uh, we're very proud of what you're doing. Uh, and let's not forget about space, because if I didn't do my homework, Lisa would remind me when I go back to the table. Uh, but I think it's an exciting time as well for the space industry. The fact that we're going back to the moon, uh, and I, want, I will say it again and again, because I, I think this is our moment. Uh, I think that the world is looking at Canada in a much different way. Uh, I come from the Apollo generation, where I remember, you know, we were watching TV and history was being made. This time, we're going to be in the capsule, and we're going to make history. That's the difference. And I think this is going to have, obviously, a lot of impact for our industry, because uh, not only uh, we're going to invest in civilian space, but as you know, this is going to have impact also in the defense industry. So we're very pleased that, thanks to your work, Lisa, and many others, uh, Canada now is seen as one of the leaders in that. But listen, I'm not here this morning to tell you that everything is perfect. We must do better, and we will. There's no doubt about that. I came here this morning to tell you that everything is good, everything is perfect, that we can't do better. If there's one area uh, that we need to do is to work more closely with you uh, when we're buying uh, capabilities. And, and procurement uh, is one of the things that I told you from the start. I am working with Minister Anand very closely, Minister Chasek, to make sure that we are fit for purpose of the 21st century. And an evolving threat in a geopolitics that is changing rapidly, we also need to modernize ourselves internally to make sure that we can meet this challenge. And I think for me, uh, we, it's very clear in my mind that there are our procurement process, that government procurement remains critical uh, to the growth of the Canadian industrial base. And therefore, we need to work with you. I think if we're going to be uh, investing uh, the kind of money uh, that we're looking at in our uh, defense capabilities. We need to make sure that at the same time, we build the industry, we build the SMEs, we build the Canadian business, we build the future right here in Canada. And I think we can work also with our allies around the world and become this long-term strategic partner that everyone is looking for. And that's going to require us to change the way we do things. But I think we are capable. Because for me, this is going to bring us further as a nation. This is going to provide jobs. This is going to provide opportunities. This is going to bring the country together at a time where we can raise to the challenge of the 21st century. 
Just look back in history. Canada used to be the leader in the world when it came to production. I happened to work in a building which is called CDL, my predecessors of a couple of decades. And I, I read his book, and I remember when CDL was in my shoes, trying to procure at the time of the Second World War. And I can tell you, Canada did great things. Canada was at the forefront. Canada was even procuring for the United States a number of things. Let's get back to that place. Let's make sure together that we can do that. So let's seize the moment. Let's be ambitious. Let's make sure that we build together the best defense procurement and the best defense industry right here in Canada to serve our allies and partners around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for that. Merci tout le monde. Bon après-midi.